Our special guest is a native Savannian, a resident of Savannah, and has a distinguished career in the film industry. And I will let Adrian Boner, who is new at Armstrong and teaches in our theater program, teaches video production. She's going to introduce him to you. Thank you for being here. Good morning, everyone. Um, he has worked on many films, such as Mission Impossible 3, Wolfman, General's Daughter, Paycheck, and many, many, many more. And he used to be the executive vice president for production at Paramount Pictures. He currently owns Leopold Ice Cream Shop downtown on Broughton Street. And he is an alum of Armstrong Atlanta State University. So I would like to take this time and introduce Stratton Leopold. Thank you all. Also, thanks for asking me out here. I'm going to sit down. Mm -hmm. um, I thought what we would do, in fact, Adrian, you may have to prompt me occasionally. I would talk a little bit about how I started in the motion picture industry. And then I thought I would um, talk about career paths. Those of you who are in the various functions of, of be, be it acting, be it directing, be it producing, what have you, there are things that I've learned over, over the years, over the decades that I've been in this business that may be a, a benefit for you. And then I thought we'd throw it open for questions because we can be specific then perhaps with any questions that you might have. I'm from here. I remember Armstrong downtown. In fact, we were talking earlier, and it was a very tiny school back then. It was at the Armstrong building, the white building. Behind that was Jenkins Hall, which is now a parking lot, which was the equivalent of what this building is. And um, that, that brings up one point. Um, I was going to say a little bit later. I'll say it now. Um, my experience is primarily in motion pictures. Um, Back in those days, I did have some theater experience. I acted in a couple of plays at, at the Maskers at the old building downtown. But that was probably the extent of my acting career. Well, no, that's not true. I acted in a couple of films, too, but that's because directors would toss me into scenes. But um, Armstrong back then was a much smaller school, but we had a radio station. I actually worked at it. It was in the basement of one of the buildings, and we were on the air. I've forgotten what the wattage was. It was probably nothing, 100 watts or something. You could hear it in the neighborhood. And we were on the air until early, or no, till late evening, I think. And it, it was a lot of fun. And understand, you don't have one here yet. You should get one. <laughs> anyway, um, I, let, I, I was pre-med in school. I was good in the sciences and thought I would my brother's a doctor. He's a retired doctor now. My mother was a frustrated physician. She was born in the wrong country at the wrong time. Both my parents came from Greece. Anyway, I was in the sciences. I was pre-med. My dad died, so I came back to Savannah to run the ice cream business for a while. I realized then I did not want to be a doctor. So I don't know what I wanted to do. So I moved to New York. I'd been going there since I was a kid. My, my uncle was still alive, Uncle Basil. I said, sell ice cream, I'm leaving, and I went to New York. Um, I took a trainee job at a company called Lowe's Corporation, which is a conglomerate, still is, and while there, I met an actress, Carol Holden is her name, she's no longer acting, sadly, because she was really talented, and got exposed to a little bit of theater, but mostly film, and that's how it started. I knew nothing about it, and said, oh, wow. By then, I'm 24 or 25, and I said, wow, this is what I want to do. So I spent like 10 years learning. So you're fortunate. At least you have a leg up on it, because I, I knew nothing at all about it, except paying, back then, it was probably a dollar just to go to movies. Anyway, um, I started in New York just meeting people. The overview of what we'll talk about today a little bit is the film business is a business of contacts. It's a business of networking. The person sitting next to you today might be running a studio someday, and you'll know that person. So these are the kinds of contacts that you will start now and develop over the next years. It's, it's, it's a business, be it the acting side or be it the producing side. It's a business that is really built on networking. Anyway, um, I met some folks in New York. Um, one person specifically that really started me, a woman named Juliet Taylor, 
who's a casting director, and she does all of, of Woody Allen's pictures now. She was an assistant then, but going back to the networking, she was an assistant for a woman named Marion Doherty. Also at that same company was a woman named Wally Nasita and her husband Rick. We were, all, we were all 25 back then. Rick ended up being president and part owner of CAA, which is, a talent ag which is an agency in Los Angeles. Well, probably the, it, you know, it is the biggest one. And it, they're all over the world. And now he's gone from that, and he's president of, of Morgan Creek Productions, which is a big production company. Going back to what I said, I met Rick when we were kids. So now, well, kids, we're 18, well, 25. Well, I, I consider the kid the, at, at my age now. Anyway, but anyway, he, here's a guy who was president of CAA and became a, a, a big deal now at Morgan Creek. Going back to what I said, it's all contacts. Anyway, Juliet started me in the business. I'd moved to Atlanta at that point because Atlanta was just starting in the film industry. She called me up. I got a film coming down there. Can anybody help? People couldn't. She talked me into it. That's how it started. Then I was fortunate enough to spend about 12 years in Atlanta learning. I mean, I, I really um, was fortunate to the extent Atlanta then was starting up in the film industry. You could work various departments and learn a lot. Um, so, and then I made the, tr made the move to California. And now I've moved back to Savannah and back and forth to California. It's, um, it's an industry that, well, l let, me, let me digress for a second. Uh, just to give you all an overview, I, I don't know much about theater in terms of professional theater. A little bit, not much in terms of how one might get into it from any, any avenue, because that's not an area I specialized in a lot. I know a little bit more about television. I know a lot about features, which is my main area. Um, so uh, those of you, depending which part of it you are in, if you're writers, God bless you, because it, no, seriously, it all starts there. I read a lot of scripts. I read a lot of scripts that aren't very good scripts. The writers, if you're, if you're talented and have a passion, a passion for a subject matter, whatever it may be, stick with it, stay, at, stay after it. If it's good, you, you, you will ultimately find someone. The writers, even though it's where it starts and that's who I have, have a great deal of respect for, it's difficult because how do you get it out there? A studio is not going to read it unless it's submitted either from a producer or from an agent. Um, the reasons why for that is that they're, they're concerned about um, someone suing them, frankly, that, you know, you've stolen my idea. So regionally is, in fact, I'll be coming back to regionally a lot this morning. Regionally is a way to get going for the writers. Um, their, writing, their screenwriting contest, we used to have one in Savannah. I don't believe we do any longer. There's one, Image Films in Atlanta has one. There are other places in the country that have them. There's one in Los Angeles that, that, I'm, that I'm part of that has them. These are ways to at least get it seen by people, and if it's good, it, it should, be, it, it should ha have, some, have some traction there. Um, and ultimately, then, you, you will find an agent or a producer that, that can take you on um, to get your work done. Also, and I don't know if you have much production here in terms of, 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 of seeing your films or anything. We have video production one, and we have video production uh -huh. two um, in place. But as far as we are, me and Pam did talk about um, getting something started as far as with the films. Yeah, that would be great. For instance, if you write shorts, a ten-minute film, T to get it done here, that, that that does a couple of things. It gets your work produced first of all, and it gives you a piece of film that you can show someone, which helps everyone. It helps the camera per people here. It helps the directors here and the actors here. So that's, that's a program that might be a good idea to push forward. And, and shoot shorts, shoot 10-minute films, enter it in film festivals. Let me, come, let me come back to writers. Protect your material. Um, people will steal your, your ideas sometimes, they'll try to. Uh, the easiest way is Writers Guild, which is a union. Uh, we'll, we're talking about unions a lot too today. 
Writers Guild will um, register your work. It costs like 15 or 20 bucks to do it. Um, what they do is you send them, um, it's probably electronic now, but before it was a printed copy of your work. They then uh, timestamp it, file it, and send you a registration number. So it's like a copyright. What happens then is at that point in time, that work was registered by you to them. If subsequent to that, someone comes up and says, oh, I had this idea, because uh -uh, yours is registered. The other way is copywriting it with, with the government. That's another way to do it. The industry primarily uses uh, the guild uh, to, to register. That's, that's fairly, it's fairly common and, and it's fairly simple, too. It, it, you, can do it, you can do it by mail, by phone, by, by email. Um, but protect it, because people will try to, to grab it from you, especially if it's a hot topic. Um, the, the, those of you who are directors or, want, or would like to be directors, if you're writers as well, that's great, because you've double-barreled them. Then I think of Stallone, he didn't direct it, but with Rocky, they tried to buy that from, um, I've forgotten who, who produced, oh, I can almost remember it. Anyway, they kept trying to buy it from him and not have him be involved in it or star in it. And he was not a, a, that known that well then. And yet he stuck to his guns because it was something that he knew people, I mean, the studios wanted it. So by sticking to your guns in situations like that, then you can, you can get you can, what you want is uh, either directing your own or at least controlling your, your, your own destiny with your project. Oftentimes when you do sell a project to a studio, uh, you won't have much control. So as much as you can exert in the beginning, that, that really helps you out a lot because you can realize your dream on the screen. Directors, much the same. Um, I would say directors and actors, think of smaller markets, think of third markets to get a, to get a resume going. I think of Atlanta, Chicago, New, uh, Louisiana, generally Baton Rouge, and in New Orleans and Miami to a lesser degree, it's somewhat easier to break into these markets, say from the, from the directing and acting side, and get a resume. Because if you hit LA or New York with, uh, with nothing, then it's, there, there are a lot of people there that are trying the same thing. It, uh, I've always felt that, and that's what I did, I mean, but not because I did it, but I've always felt if at least you get experience for the actors and directors, get a piece of film with your work on it that you can show an agency or a producer. It'll help you in the long run getting out to Los Angeles. Um, many people from the producing side would go to LA and get jobs like in the, in, in, in the mail room of agencies, what, again, uh, what have you like that. Again, the reason for it, one of the reasons for that is contacts. Because if you're industrious and really, really, no. Really, really knock the water over. Really would like to get ahead. That helps you again there. Um, of course, there are probably 5,000 people wanting the same job. So that's why I suggested earlier just going to a third market and getting, and getting some experience there. Um, from the acting side, act. I mean, that's get as much experience as you can. Many different roles. Do theater do radio, do commercials if you can. I mean, local, locally you probably can. Do TV, do everything you can to get a resume going, to get your work on film or on tape or digitally so you can show folks. Um, you can do a lot of that here in Savannah, especially theater. Um, there, there, are, there, are, there are a few theaters in town still, yeah, that, that you can get work done. And oftentimes they'll let you film that or tape it so you can get film on yourself. Um, for um, television work, I know that quite a few commercials are done here. I'm sure, I don't know if there's an agency that handles that here or not, but I'm sure just a few phone calls to TV stations, to, to Madden, places like that, I would think you can probably find folks who, who would um, consider using you in spots. Again, the objective is get film on yourself for the actors. Um, regional theater, uh, there are a couple of agents and casting directors in Atlanta. Shea Griffin, Kathy Hardigree both come to mind. 
who do all, most of the work of films that come into the Southeast. So getting to know these folks and getting them to consider you would, would be very, is very, very helpful because then all, all of a sudden you have a leg into Los Angeles then. Um, more difficult for directors in, in as much as you have to have something to direct. Um, so there I would, I would say, again, having, doing small films here and entering them in contests. Contests are looked at a lot. Shorts are looked at. People, people notice those. And if you win a few awards with shorts, I think you, you, I mean, then you can have something to present to an agent in Los Angeles to take you on. Um, speaking of Los Angeles for a second, the film industry is unionized, heavily unionized, which means for the actors, you've got to be a member of Screen Actors Guild. If you're not, it's very difficult to have an agent even talk to you. How do you, get a, how do you become a member of Screen Actors Guild? It's very difficult as well. You either have to have a role in a film, and then you what they call a must join, which means under the Taft-Hartley law, you're allowed to do one film in a union situation without joining. Second time, you must join. Um, I've gotten people into the guild, in, in this Screen Actors Guild now, quite a few, and it's much easier in a small market in Atlanta, say, because a film company will come to Atlanta or Savannah. as a film prepping in Savannah, a small film right now. They start filming 15 February. It's a, a friend of mine's producing. It's a, it's a little film, but again, opportunity. Get a resume going. If you get, and it's a union picture, and if you get a, if you get a speaking part, one word, then you can join the guild. Um, agents won't represent you typically in Los Angeles. There are, there are some that will, but they don't have the clout to do much for you unless you're a member of Screen Actors Guild. Um, but again, the easiest way is, with, is, is in, a, in a small market, smaller market. Um, so I would suggest that before you go to LA for the actors, because it, you'll, you'll, you'll be trampled on then if, if you're not. There are people in LA who have gotten in the guild by doing extra work. The Extras Union and Screen Actors Guild are, all are, are one. And I've forgotten the um, amount of time, amount, uh, how you do it from, but, but it's possible to bridge over as our, unless they've changed that, which is possible too. There are about 120,000 members of Screen Actors Guild. So it gives you an idea of competition. I mean, tons of people, which goes back to get a resume. Um, if you're talented, you will, you, you, you will find a level in it. A story I use, um, I was doing locations and casting for Dukes of Hazard for the first six episodes we filmed in Atlanta. I was living in Atlanta then. And um, casting Sonny Schroyer as Enos and Ben Jones as, as Cooter was done. I mean, that, that was easy. We didn't have Tom Wopat yet, and we didn't have uh, the, the, the Bo Cap. We didn't, we'd have any, we didn't have Bo or Luke yet. John Schneider, I knew, because he was an underground Atlanta. We're talking now 1975 or 6. I've forgotten the years. John was singing in underground Atlanta with a little, uh, little fringed western coat on him. And he was completely wrong for what the character uh, described in the script. So I knew John, he starts calling me. Let me come in. John, come on, you're wrong. I'm not glad you, you're totally wrong. I'm sorry. I didn't, that, it's, you're type wise, you're totally wrong. And in film, that's the deal, is type a lot. Anyway, he kept, he kept asking me. I said, no, I won't do it. We were casting at Colony Square, there's a hotel there. And um, I almost Paul Picard was producing, and I've forgotten who was directing the first episode. Anyway, uh, we're in the middle of a session. I look out there. There's John with his fringed Buffalo Bill and a little tiny cowboy hat. I said, what are you doing here? He said, I've got to try. I've got to try. I've got to try. And I said, okay, come on in. So the rest, obviously, is history. And that shows how much I, I knew about casting, I guess. But again, he was totally wrong. But the fact that he had the gumption and, and the push to convince me to come in, he's a star. He's singing, I think, now, but um, it's an example of what the acting, it's true of all the, all, all, all the parts of the film industry. Everybody wants to do what you're doing. Same with me. A lot of people want to do what, what I'm doing, and 
my being in Savannah, yeah, it hurts me some, but I prefer being here because it's very grounding for me. But everybody wants to do it. So you've got to be tough. You've got to hang in there. You've, you've got to just fight the competition because it's a lot of it, especially in California. Um, uh, yeah, we, we, we could, yeah. If, 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 if there are any questions that people have right at this point, just... So we're going to go ahead and open it up for and I'm going to have some water. <laughs> Any questions for um, Stratton? The film, the working title is, obvi is oddly enough, it's, it's Savannah. It's a period picture. It takes place around <clears throat> 1920. Um, it's set in Savannah. Uh, I have not read the recent script, so I, I don't know what the cast needs are. Their office is at Madden. Uh, the fella who's producing is a friend of mine, is Jay Sedrish. Um, I don't know if it's Deb Aquino in LA is casting. I don't know who's doing it here, if anyone. Um, a professor at SCAD is directing, or from SCAD. Um, but uh, as I recall the cast list from an earlier script, I mean, they're, they're there, there are roles in there. It's a Jungian picture, which helps those of you who are acting. So um, they start 15 February, roughly. Um, again, I don't know what their cast needs are, but you, but you should contact them out, out at Medden and just get a picture and resume to them. And maybe if they have auditions, which I'm sure they will at some point soon, just make sure you're part, just like John Schneider. Just push your way into it if you have to. Don't tell Jay I said that. <laughs> we have any other questions? Over here. The question is about about theater for writing. Um, there's a woman in Savannah the rest of this month, named Camilla Carr. I don't have, I have to get a phone number for I'll, I'll try to get a number. She's a playwright. Um, she would have more information about that than I will. Um, I don't know that much about that part of it. I, I really don't. But someone like Camilla, who's not from here, but I think she has a place here or something, she could be helpful. She's had plays, in, plays that have been produced, too. So she could be helpful. If, if, you, if you'll see me after, I'll, I'll try to get a number for you. Question here. Good question, Fred. I just want, for the younger folks, to put it in perspective, John Schneider is now the, uh, plays the uh, father role of Clark Kent in Smallville. Well, <laughs> a lot of years have gone by since I... <laughs> I remember we were trying to sell a car of his. He had a, a Countach which is a, back in those days probably 150,000 back then. Kenny Rogers was filming in Atlanta. So John says, we've got to sell his car to Kenny. And I said, hey, you know what Kenny wants? Oh, yeah, he wants a car. So a buddy of mine named Steve Beiser, who dealt in cars, I, we, I said, Steve, was, Kenny was shooting somewhere nor, north of Atlanta. So he, Steve calls me up, let's, let's take the car out there. So, so we get on the freeways. And when you're driving a car like it, first of all, you're lying down in a damn thing. But, but when, when you're driving that car, I mean, every cop for five counties is, is following you because they know you're going to let it go. And we couldn't. We didn't. That car is so low to the ground, we, we got to uh, where Kenny was shooting. And um, his bus was down this little hill. So Steve says a car can't go down that hill. It was on grass at this point. I had to get out and just kneel down in front of the car as he's inching forward. Kenny's looking at us, do all this. We finally get it down the hill, at, and avoiding rocks, because it'll tear the car apart. And Kenny just <laughs> he goes, no way. Because, I mean, if, if, if it's that delicate a car, which it is, or was, that it, it, it failed. But, I mean, it's just, um, John, John likes cars, and he had a number of them. I, he probably still has it. I'm not sure anybody bought the damn thing. Back here. Hmm. The question is about breaking into editing in film. Um, 
You know, in, in a way, that's probably uh, maybe, maybe a, a bit easier than the others because not that many folks want to get into editing. Uh, I would do two things. Um, it, it's all digital now. You, you, obviously, you have to learn that all, all of those platforms. But become an apprentice, that's union too, but you can, you, you can intern and ultimately become an apprentice editor, which is a union position that gets you into it. That's an easier pathway uh, than the others. Again, because the competition isn't, isn't as great. Um, there, I would say, um, is Avram fine? Is, is, is he here now? Is he in Atlanta still? He, he, he was teaching at SCAD for a little while. Av Fine is probably back in Atlanta. He's a really good editor. Um, there are folks like that. If you get the Georgia, if you, if you want to stay in this area initially, the Georgia, guide, Georgia Film Guide, look up the editors. Oh, another one too. Oh, what's her name? There's a woman in Atlanta. Oh, I, have to get, I can't remember her name. I almost had it. But um, who's really nice. And you get with someone like that and start working your way into the system then become an apprentice and an assistant, and then you become an editor. Um, I would still go with, 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 with a smaller market to start off with. That's an easier pathway in the major markets, I, I, I feel. Again, because competition is not as great. And, um, but if you start in, in, in a small, if, if you start in Atlanta, say, with this woman whose name I can't remember, um, which I'll get, <laughs> uh, I think that would be a pathway for you. Because then, get the experience, she does national things. It's not as if she's doing some local tire commercial. Um, and, and then work your way up in, in, in that manner. But, but learn the platforms. Because now with Apple, I mean, there are so many platforms. No, not to, a couple of platforms, really. But just make sure you have the avid knowledge and all the knowledge on that. And even in visual effects, uh, learning about incorporation of that. Because that is, in many ways, a future. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get her name for you. I can't remember it. But any other any other questions? Belen, you have a question. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you currently working on? I'm, I'm working on meetings right now. Um, I had a meeting. John Wu is a director, a film director. It does a lot of action. I've known John about 15 years now. I had a meeting with John in early December in Los Angeles. He's now moved to Beijing. He wants me to produce a movie called The Flying Tigers with him. John would direct it. It's based on true story in World War II. American pilots in 1938 went to China. A, a, a major Chenault um, persuaded the president to send 50 pilots and 50 planes over to fight the Japanese that were attacking China at that point. And um, it's, a good, it's a good script. And it's funded by the country of China, so they put a ton of money into it. So it's going to happen. My only negative is it's pretty far from Savannah, and I enjoy being here. I would be in China for about a year, and I'm not so sure. I mean, John's a great guy. Terrence Chang, who's been with him since Hong Kong days, lovely people. Th that's on the table. There are two other pictures that I'm working on right now. One, sadly, none shooting in this country. Um, there's a script that w right now, in fact, I got it last night again. It's called Cover. It is a story of that Russian spy who was poisoned in London a couple of years ago. It's that story and the backstory with that. And it's pretty good as well. That would film in Germany, which would play for Russia, and in England. Um, the other one, James Cromwell is a character actor who's a dear friend. I mean, he's in Savannah. He come, his kids went to school in Savannah. He's, he's here a lot. Jamie has written a script um, based on, on an Italian novel called Without Blood, which is a story of redemption, really. Helen Mirren is who we'd like to get for it. Um, that would film in, in, in Italy. We're only partially funded on that, so that may or may not happen, because Jamie's been offered a Broadway show, speaking of, of theater. And whether he takes the show or not would really depend on if we, get, if we get it together for the film. So it's all up in the air right now. I'm not working on anything. I mean, those I'm working on, but nothing specifically is going to happen. And sadly enough, nothing in this country, which I would, unless I can convince John Wu to shoot and end the country of China to shoot the action in the States. Because um, 
we have the better pilots and better stunt coordinators and better um, special effects people, either here or England, because um, John, sadly, he, uh, on a movie, his last film, Red Cliff War, it's called, which is a fairly large Chinese content picture about an event that happened about a war in China in the year eight or 900, I can't remember when. But they had injuries and they even had a death of a stuntman in China. So uh, I can't, I don't want to be involved with that. I mean, that's, that's just, it, film's not worth it. It really isn't worth it. Um, so those are the ones I'm working on. I was thinking about something else just now. When I was on staff, when I was an EVP at Paramount, um, I was impressed by the fact that people don't read, which is why we, at least with the ice cream business, we're, we're getting involved with the libraries here about reading programs. I would sit in meetings where, with, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, with the chairman of the studio where we're discussing billions of dollars in money to be allocated for films and discussing a script. And I will say, oh, that's, that's, like, in, that's like Dante, it's like Inferno. And they all look at me like, what? And you, oh my God, they don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and we're talking about CEOs of studios here. So it's frightening. So that's the other thing for everyone, really, not only in the film business. Just, I mean, just goodness, just read, please. <laughs> Thank you very much.